Hi guys, welcome. Just gonna wait for more people to come in and then I'll get started. Hi Pam, <laughs> hi Lisa, hi, hi. <laughs> Hi Naomi, I miss you. Hi guys. Okay, good, I'm so excited everybody's joining in. I'm just gonna wait another minute. Okay. Hi. Okay, so while everybody's coming in, I'm just gonna tell you guys a little bit about myself and what we're making tonight. So um, I am a certified health coach and I graduated from culinary school about three years ago. And um, I worked at Mercer Kitchen and ABCB. So tonight we're gonna be making one of the dishes that I got from ABCB of what I learned. And then another dish we're gonna be making is um, whole roasted fish that um that i um had from a while ago that you guys always keep on asking me to show you how to make so i'm making it so i guess we'll get started so my name's francis from franz Vale's kitchen if you don't know and hold on okay if you guys have any questions throughout this demo just um write them in the comments and hopefully i'll get to them Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is the whole roasted fish and we're gonna salt crust it. So basically people get nauseous <laughs> when I hold raw fish, but I'm gonna show you guys. Um, you guys shouldn't be afraid of uh, raw fish, especially like when they're cleaned and when they don't smell and they're fresh. So just to know about fish, you wanna make sure you can see the eyes are super clear and it doesn't smell fishy or anything, and then I get it from the fish store already cleaned on the inside. Oh, good question, thank you. This is Bronzino. So for this recipe, I'm gonna post it on my Instagram page later. You could use any type of whole fish, anything with the skin, because we are putting salt around it, so we don't want it to be too salty, so we're just gonna make sure um, it has a skin and it's a whole fish, okay. So the first thing we're gonna do, so it's already cleaned and I pat it dry. And I just have a sheet tray with parchment paper. And I'm just gonna move this over. And we're just gonna fill the fish on the inside. So I personally like to do it really simple and clean. So I'm just taking lemon, fresh lemon. And you could add um, oranges, you could add grapefruit, any citrus you want. I'm just gonna take it out like four pieces. And if you guys could see, I'll move it down. And I'm just gonna stuff it inside the cavity of the fish. And then I have fresh thyme. You could use any herbs that you want. You could use um, rosemary, you could use fresh basil, parsley, cilantro. And just and using thyme. You could also put jalapeno inside if you wanted. You could really play around with it and do whatever you want. So now I'm just gonna add a little bit of seasoning, just some salt and hot pepper flakes. You could use black pepper if you want, up to you. I just like to switch it up sometimes, so I'm just putting hot pepper flakes. And now, I'm gonna show you guys. So now this is basically prepared. And if you guys want it, you could just roast this as is. You could roast it in the oven, on the barbecue, on the stove top, whatever you want. So I'm gonna show you how we make the salted crusted fish that you might have seen at restaurants before, or you might have seen like on vacation or on Instagram or anything. So I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make. So I just have four egg whites. I just whipped it up before. So you wanna make sure that it's super um, whipped and you could see that it's like really all mixed together and you don't want it to be um, liquidy at all. 
So today I just have two cups of kosher salt. So don't use sea salt or anything, always kosher salt. So it works perfect. So now I just have a spatula. Spatula is very important. You don't want to use a spoon because then you'll kill the egg whites. And we want to keep, keep the egg whites nice and fluffy, if you could see, so it doesn't break. So we're just putting salt a little bit at a time. We're just gonna mix this all together slowly and we're gonna fold it in. You don't wanna just mix it like that or else it'll kill the egg whites completely. So we're just gonna lightly fold it in. I do it in about like four different increments. We're just gonna keep on folding it in. And honestly, hi Sasha. Hi, I miss you. So I'm just continuing to fold it in. And if you guys wanted, you could double this recipe. So it's just four egg whites and two cups of salt. So if you're making a bigger fish, like a red snapper, or if you want to do two bronzinos or something like that, you could just double it. Super easy to double the recipe. So I'm just continuing to fold in the egg whites and the salt. So I'm just gonna pour this all in so you guys can see. And my oven is also preheated to 450. So it's gonna be high heat cooking. We're basically building like a crust so the fish is gonna steam. So it's not gonna be like really salty or, or, or it's not gonna get burnt because it's on such a high temperature. It's gonna be more like a steamed fish, which is gonna taste incredible because it's fish. So that's why like you always wanna make sure that you're getting really fresh fish or else um, it's not gonna taste as good. <laughs> okay, so this is the egg whites, if you could see, mixed with the salt, and we could see that the egg whites still hold its consistency. So I'm gonna take the fish back. So if you're just joining, we just put some lemon pieces and fresh thyme and a little bit of salt and red pepper flakes. So now I'm just gonna move, you guys could see. So this is the fun part. So we're basically covering the whole fish on the bottom and on the top layer. So I'm just gonna move the fish over to the front and I'm gonna put half of the fish mixture on the bottom, maybe it's a little too much, just all on the bottom of the pan. So you wanna make sure you're using parchment paper also because it will stick if you don't, and it could burn also, we don't want that to happen. So I'm just making, it doesn't have to be such a thick layer, you wanna just make sure that it's all coated. Okay, so now I'm just gonna put my bronzino on top. And like I said, you could use any fish you want. It all works. Um, do you finish? Uh, yeah, I seasoned the fish with a little bit of salt also, just because the inside of the fish isn't really gonna be so salty because we're just coating the outside with the skin. So I'm just gonna take my other part of the egg white mixture. You guys could see. And you want to build, we're building a big dome. We're building a nice crust all over and fully cover it. If you want, you can leave the tail out a little bit just for um, the look of it, just so it looks nice. And we're covering the top. How many egg whites? So it's four egg whites and two cups of kosher salt. If you wanted, you could double the recipe if you're using a bigger fish or if you, um, if you're using a bigger fish or if you're using more than one whole fish. And now you guys are gonna see why I use egg whites and not just pour salt on top. Because if you pour salt on top, it's not gonna work well at all. And you can just see that it just builds like a nice crust and the egg whites were fluffed up. So it's gonna help with the baking and it's gonna rise and we're gonna see when it's done how it looks. Okay, so once it is formed, 
You want to make sure everything's covered so the fish could really steam. You could get whole fish from anywhere. Make sure they clean it. Make sure it's fresh. Make sure it doesn't really smell so strong. So tonight I'm using Branzino, but I've used any whole fish that you could get your hands on. Definitely use. Okay, so this is done. Look how pretty this looks. If you wanted, you could just clean that off. And like I like the tail sticking out a little bit, or you could just um, cover cover the whole thing. Um, you could do this without the head. Just make sure that the rest of the fish has a skin, or else it won't work if you don't have skin on the fish. It'll be too salty. Okay, so now I'm just popping this in the oven at um, 450, like I said, for about 25 minutes. So while that's in, I'm just going to tell you about the second dish that we're making. Anybody has questions before we start on the second part, let me know. I'll kind of look through. Okay, so I'm going to start on the second part and then I'll just see um, answers and all that. Okay, so the second um, thing that we're making is delicata um, lettuce cups. And I learned this when I worked in ABCV. It's a restaurant in the city, um, downtown. It's a part of John George restaurant. And um, I worked there for four months. So I learned a lot. And one of the recipes I loved are the um, delicata squash cups. So. Hold on, how long are you leaving? There's a lot of questions. <laughs> um, I'm leaving it in the oven for 25 minutes for the fish. So this is delicata squash. If you don't know what it is, I'm gonna show you guys how I open it. And it's really easy to get now, it's in season. It's, part, it's a part of the squash family, so you can get it really easy. Um, so this is gonna be the base of the um, lettuce cup. So if you wanted to use sweet potatoes or acorn squash or spaghetti squash, you could use it all. I'm just going to show you the method of how to make it and then you could replicate it in any which way. Okay, so we're going to start on this recipe. So this is the delicata squash. I'm going to show you how easy it is to cut it. So you want to make sure you have a sharp knife. And by the way, I cleaned this before. We are gonna use the skin, it's completely edible, and it cooks well in the oven, so I like to keep it on, it's added fiber, and the texture is good also, so it's great. So I just clean the outside really well. I'm just gonna cut it in half, and cut it, well, I'm gonna cut the top off, and I'm gonna cut it in half again, and we can see there's all seeds. What knife do I use? So this is Mercer. I love their knives. They're not really expensive. Um, but this is like my favorite knife. And just like any knife you buy, just make sure that you are taking care of it and sharpening it well and your knives will stay good. Okay. So my delicata squash has seeds, so I'm just gonna discard them with a spoon. Really easy. You could use the seeds if you want and roast them. They're just a little small but you definitely can do that if you'd like. And I'm just gonna use this half and I'll show you guys what I do. So definitely discard the seeds, but like I said, you can roast them in the oven if you'd like. Okay. I don't know, delicata squash is one of my favorite. It's sweet, but it's not too sweet. It's really, really delicious. Okay. So now I'm just going to slice it into about like a half an inch thick. And you want to make sure they're all the same size so that they all cook evenly. Slice them all up. See, you want them to be really all the same size. 
I'm just going to get a half sheet tray. And everybody always asks me if I put parchment paper, if I don't. It really depends on the on what I'm roasting. If I'm roasting eggplant, I usually put parchment paper because it really tends to stick more. If I'm using more of like a thicker vegetable, then I know it's not really going to stick. And I'll get a nice layer of, um, I'll get a nice um, caramelized flavor and I'll get nice and crunchy when I don't use parchment paper. So for delicata squash, I just roast it straight on um, a sheet tray. So I'm just going to spray my pan with olive oil. And this is my favorite thing from Amazon. Just a nice little spray bottle instead of buying a pan. I'm just going to dump my delicata squash on here. And for this, I don't do measurements. I just put some salt and there's olive oil on the bottom already. And then I'm just putting a little bit of maple syrup. I love this one. It's organic, it's kosher. Great. Okay. So just a little bit, just to coat it so it has a little bit of sweetness. And now you wanna just mix it and make sure when you're roasting vegetables that they're all layered in one flat line. Cause once they start going on top of each other, they're not going to cook well and they're not gonna get that nice um, caramelization that we want. And I use kosher salt for everything. When I'm cooking, kosher salt always never use table salt. So I'm just gonna put it in the oven at 375 for about like 25 minutes also. Okay, so that was part one. That is the um, squash. And like I said, if you want, you can use literally any um, root vegetable, you could roast um, sweet potatoes, spaghetti squash, acorn squash, anything. So now, we're gonna make the dressing, and this dressing is more on the savory side because we have the delicata squash that is sweet, so we're gonna balance out flavors. So I'm just getting my food processor. It's always good to make dressing in a food processor. I'm a big, big advocate for that. It's much easier and it comes out better, so I love that. So this recipe, I'm gonna post on my Instagram later, but if you want it, you could just write down the recipe now. I'll just show you how, um, how I make it. So the fish I'm leaving in for 25 minutes. It's still in there. I'm gonna show you guys when it's done. Don't worry. So for this recipe, we could use either um, chives or um, scallions. Tonight I'm using chives, that's what I have. And then I'm gonna use about one cup of lemon juice, fresh lemon juice, always. If you want, you could use lime juice also, works great. Then we're gonna use one jalapeno. So if you wanted it to be a little bit spicy, you could leave in the seeds. If not, you could take out the seeds. So it's just one cup of lemon juice, about a cup of scallions or chives, and then we have one jalapeno. And then depending on how you like it, you could add more jalapenos, take out, whatever you like. And now we're gonna put a nice heaping tablespoon of salt. We want it, we're not putting so much dressing in the lettuce cup, so we want it to have that nice pungent flavor. And then we're gonna put about a cup of, maybe more like a half a cup of olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. So I'm just not measuring this out, but you can. And now I'm just gonna blend it up. It's like getting everywhere, hold on. I'll get back to that in a minute. 
I'm using a small one so it overflowed a little bit, but it's okay. We're gonna get back to it. So anyways, we're gonna continue with, I'm just gonna put it in a different blender in a minute, but we're gonna continue building the lettuce cup. So another ingredient that's in the lettuce cup that I already prepped, show you guys, are these fresh herbs. So it's just fresh dill, mint, and a little bit of basil. And this is what's gonna go on top of the, on top of the lettuce cups. What kind of, okay. Wrap a towel around the bowl. Let's see if, let's see if this works. Oh, yeah. Thank you. So we got the dressing all blended up. We're gonna try that, make sure it's good. And if you want, you could always tweak these recipes. If you want it to be more um, spicy, you could add another jalapeno. If you want it to be less, you could take it out. Whatever you guys want. So you could really play around with this recipe a lot. Okay, so now we have the fresh herbs, we have the salad dressing. And we have the lettuce cups. So for this recipe, I love to use either like a nice fresh Boston lettuce, which is ideal. Look how pretty these leaves are. And I love to use, I'm just gonna take it off. And I love to use radicchio. Radicchio is beautiful. We could see here, they're gorgeous leaves. And um, I love to use these as my lettuce cups too, because why not, they're so pretty. So I'm just gonna have a mixture of both and I'm gonna show you guys how we assemble them. But for now, I'm just gonna put it on the side, clean the board. And now we are going to cut the avocado. So the avocado for this is usually like a half of avocado. These are small. I'm gonna post this recipe later on my Instagram, Franz Bounds Kitchen. You guys can all see. So for the avocado, this is like a small cute one. I just have a bowl with water. If I'm making a lot of them at a time, I like to just do this, it's a really good trick. I'm just gonna take the spoon and I'm just going to scoop under so that the whole avocado the whole half comes out in one piece at once. You can see it's a little bit hard still and not ripe, but it's fine. We're just gonna take this off and we wanna have a clean avocado half, okay? And it's a little brown, but that's okay. And then we're just gonna place it on the cutting board. I'm gonna show you guys one more time how to do it. So we have the half and I'm taking a wet spoon. You want it to be clean. I'm just gonna see how easily the half of the avocado comes out and it comes out, you could see, nice and clean. I'm just gonna put this on the table. And then, hold on, okay. So now you guys could see a little bit better here. And then you're just gonna cut, you're gonna cut nice medium slices, like about like a quarter of an inch thick. And we're just gonna, fan it. So we're not cutting the top, we're just gonna start from the bottom and we're just gonna fan out the avocado like that. It's a little brown, I'm sorry, but it still is pretty. But we're gonna cover it with fresh herbs anyway, so that's okay. My Instagram account is Franz Downs Kitchen. I'm gonna post all the recipes later. Okay, so the fish is still cooking, I just checked it. And we're gonna continue. So the next thing, if you've eaten at ABCV, um, you know the lettuce cup. So all the ingredients I basically have and the, the last ingredient that's really gonna go on top are these roasted pepita seeds. So I just bought these raw. I like to keep raw nuts in my pantry because or seeds because once you roast them, they do have a shorter shelf life and they go rancid really quickly. So 
these are them raw and now I just roasted them dry roasted in the oven no oil no salt nothing just at 350 for like 25 minutes okay so now we're gonna get started on assembling them I'm just gonna show you I roasted these before so these are the delicata squash how it comes out look how good they look they're not burnt at all by the way they're just like nice and caramelized from the maple syrup and they taste delicious they're so good okay so if anybody has any questions by the way you could definitely comment and i'll answer them so i love plating always if you've taken my cooking classes before with a white clean plate it just makes the food look prettier more presentable and nice so, okay, my plate is here. And then, like I said, you could just use um, Boston lettuce cups. I like to use radicchio. I just think it's pretty. So we'll do two and two. So it's basically a nice layer full of flavor. That's why I love these lettuce cups so much. They're so good. Um, somebody just asked me what the recipe is for the squash. So this is the squash, and the recipe is just olive oil, salt, kosher salt. I only use kosher salt and a little bit of maple syrup. And then I just laid it on my baking tray without parchment paper so it gets nice and crispy. And I roasted it for about 25 minutes in the oven, and they look like this. Okay. Now I'm just going to add about two pieces of delicata squash in each, depending on how big you cut your squash, like I said, like a half an inch. You can use one or two, nothing specific. Okay, layer one. Now, we're gonna add the avocado. Like I said, we fanned the avocado. So we're using about a half avocado. So I, just bought these baby avocados, so like one half isn't so much, but you can use a half if you're using a big avocado. So I'm just fanning this out like this. So I'm not cutting the top, as you could see, and then it's really, really easy to fan out. So whoever just joined, I'm gonna show you guys one more time how we cut the avocado. So I just have a bowl filled with water. Just gonna cut the avocado in half. You wanna make sure it's ripe, of course. And now the pit, we're just going to shake it out. And now I'm just gonna take my spoon. You want it to be clean. Right there every time you scoop out the avocado. You just scoop it out really, really easily. Look how pretty. See, this one's a nice one. It's not brown. So, <laughs> you could see. Look how pretty. Okay, great. So now we just have, have a knife, and you should do this on a cutting board, but I'm not now. And we're just gonna make um, some slits in between, and then we're just gonna fan it out. And we're gonna add it on. I'm just gonna do it one more time. The last one. It's gonna go. Okay. So. And if you don't like avocado, you don't have to put it. It just makes it taste really, really good. So I highly suggest it. So I'm just fanning it all out. And now we are going to add the lemon dressing. So this is the dressing. I'm just going to mix it up. And what we put in this dressing was chives. And like I said, you can put... Um, scallions, lemon juice, olive oil, and the jalapeno. And now I'm just going to take the dressing, and you want to put just like one spoon, just a little bit. It is a small lettuce cup. It's meant to be an appetizer, bite size. So I'm just putting one scoop on each one. Look how pretty these look already. And now we are just going to put the toasted pepitas. Like I said, I just roasted them in the oven on 350 with no um, oil or 
spices, just plain roasted. Just gonna put that on top and then I hand chop them. So you could either put it in a food processor or a blender, or you could just hand chop it. I like to get different pieces so you get that crunch factor. Look how good these look. Okay. So the dressing ingredients, one more time. So this is the dressing. So it's either you could put um, scallions, lemon juice, olive oil, salt, and a jalapeno. So depending on how you like the taste, you could put one jalapeno too. And I put a cup of lemon juice, a half a cup of extra virgin olive oil, a heaping tablespoon of salt, and like I said, one jalapeno. Okay. So now I have my herb mix. And the herb mix was just basil, um, basil, dill, and mint. You could use any herbs that you have in your fridge or in your pantry, whatever you have, because any herbs are good on this. It's so just a very flavorful, nice dish. I'd love to serve for lunch. Ooh, and you can make, <laughs> I just dropped it. And you could make this recipe for Shabbat and you could prep all the ingredients in advance. So it's great to have. So I'm just putting all the herbs all over. Look how pretty these look. And I love using radicchio also because it does make it look pretty than just having um, the Boston lettuce cups. Then I just put the fresh herbs. And now I like to add a little cumin on the top, just for added flavor, not necessary. And we could add a little bit of flake sea salt. It's right here. Just gonna sprinkle just a little bit for extra flavor. We're just trying to layer all the flavors. And now at this point, so it's basically done. Look how pretty these look. Except I dropped that one, but that's okay. They're still pretty. Um, and now to serve it, you can either serve it like this because it looks really, really so nice. I love how these look like this. Um, or you could add, I love to add fresh um, edible flowers. They usually have it in the supermarkets. Um, but um, I couldn't find them today. They didn't have them on Sundays. So um, next time you guys could add edible flowers. Today I'm just gonna add some radish sprouts that I love. I just think they're pretty, gives it a nice color, even though there's so much color on this already. It's so pretty. And that is the ABC twist on delicata lettuce cups. This is the recipe. Super easy to make. We, we made it together in about like 10 minutes. So that's why I love, love, love making these. I'm gonna post the recipe on my Instagram, Brands Balance Kitchen, so check it out later. Um, if anybody has any questions on this recipe, you can let me know. If not, I'm gonna check on the fish. And we'll see. Okay, somebody else asked me about the knife. So the knife that I'm using is Mercer. It's a good knife. It's like not so expensive, but like I said, you always wanna make sure that you're cleaning your knife well, you're taking care of it, you're sharpening it well, so your knife stay good. So that's always important. So just, again, if you're just joining, these are the Delicata Cups. How pretty. Love them. They're delicious. They really, really are all the flavors and it's really versatile. You can really make it in all different ways that you want and add different herbs and add different um, dressings even, really anything. So I'm gonna show you guys when I'm gonna know when the fish is done to take it out. It's really almost done. It needs like literally one more minute. See if you could hear the tap.
Okay. So we need about like one more minute. And I'm going to take it out and I'll show you guys how the fish um, comes out. So it needs about 25 minutes. Once it's golden brown on the outside, that's how we know it's done. And like I said, the fish, you're, you're getting more of a steamed fish rather than a grilled fish. So if you don't like steamed fresh fish, you might not love this recipe, but it is amazing. I really highly suggest you make it, especially because, um, come over Pamela. <laughs> Um, I love this, especially because you want to have, it's really much better when you have fresh fish. Just make sure you have fresh fish and I'm telling you, you will love this recipe. Okay. So I'm going to take the fish out now just to show you guys how it comes out. So somebody asked a good question. Do I always use the same knives for everything? Um, this is a chef, oh, this is a chef's knife very versatile so you could use it for vegetables you could use it for meat you could use it for fish really anything but so I like to use this for everything but when I am like slicing meat I do have a carving knife and when I am cutting smaller vegetables um, I have a paring knife which is much smaller so but this I really use for a lot of things so the fish I'm gonna pop it out now Look how good this looks. You could tell like the egg whites and the salt builds a nice crust on the outside. And this is like restaurant style. If you've ever been to Italy, if you've ever been to a nice Italian restaurant, they definitely serve something like this. So it's super easy. Like I said, the recipe for the crust, I will post. It was just um, four egg whites whipped and then two cups of kosher salt folded in we could see it was in the oven for about 45 minutes and if you could hear the tap it's a nice and firm so it's ready so basically you could wait for it to cool down or you could just serve it you guys could see it's a little bit bad on the lighting okay now we're just going to, and by the way, I love Avner's. Amazing fish. If you're in Brooklyn, I highly suggest getting fish from them. It's really, really fresh. I always love getting my fish from them. Okay, so now you can see how easy it is to just take off. The fish was on 450, but you could see right now how easy it is to take um the crust, you know what? I'm gonna take my phone and I'm gonna flip it. If I could do that, I don't even know if it's possible. Oh yeah, okay. So you guys could see that the crust, see, it doesn't sink into the fish. It just, I don't know what I said, 25 minutes, sorry. So I'm just taking off the salt. It's really easy to take off because you could see it builds a crust on the outside. It doesn't get sucked in to the fish. So you could take a knife, you could take um, a spoon, whatever you want. Maybe I'll take a spoon. And you're just going to take it off. You cannot make this recipe with fillets, no. It will not work. You need the skin to build a layer on the outside um, so it doesn't get really salty. Because this is not going to taste so salty. It's just like a good cooking method to use. So you can't use fillets. Um, I live in Jersey now, so I got it in Jersey, but like I said, I love going to Avner's in Brooklyn. They really have great fresh fish. And like I said, you could use this, um, recipe with any type of fish, any type of whole fish. You definitely need to use whole fish. And now for the big reveal, look at this. Look how amazing this came out. Nice and flaky. Look how delicious. Super, super, super flaky. Very flavorful. You could even make like a butter sauce for this. I love to make um, like a little sauce to go on the side to dip in the fish. But it's super, super flaky. I'll show you guys again. Look at this. 
so easy. So it basically steams the fish. Oh my gosh, it's so good. And it really has a lot of flavor and it's not salty. It has a lot of flavor from the lemons and the fresh thyme that's in there. Look how good, oh my gosh. And it was so easy. It really only took us 45 minutes to make both dishes from scratch. So it may seem like it's such a fancy recipe, but it's really, really easy. Look how good. And I love to even serve it, if you could see better. I love to serve it just on this sheet tray because it looks delicious and it looks so presentable and like you're in a restaurant. So that is all for today. Thank you guys so much for joining. Um, I am going to post both recipes on my Instagram page, Franz Balance Kitchen. So thank you guys for tuning in and watching me cook. If you guys have any questions, you can let me know. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. Let's see if anybody has questions. So I cook the fish for 25 minutes. You get that nice, flaky, beautiful fish, perfectly cooked, literally perfectly, perfectly cooked. Only 25 minutes. It's not dried out. It's nice and juicy and moist. So this is why I love this recipe. So thank you guys for joining and follow Friends Balance Kitchen.